Hey, everyone. Hi there, folks. This is Amanda. This is Rita. And you're listening to I Don't Know Her, Her, the podcast where we talk about women you've probably never heard of. But you should have. And now you will. All righty. We're doing a little... Little sneaky something peeks different. <laughs> something different you don't usually hear from us on a i think this is a wednesday you don't usually hear from us on a wednesday but no. you're hearing from us today you are so lucky <laughs> um we're actually what we're doing is we're just going to preview a little bit of our bonus content that we put up on our patreon we release at least one new bonus episode every month and we both talk about a woman on them so you're missing out on a lot of content here <laughs> yeah and these are actually these are stories that amanda and i have wanted to share but like sometimes we're very limited on the amount of information that we can gather on people mm-hmm. especially like if it's an a very uh, obscure person so there's but there's also a, like a really awesome story so what we wanted to do was do these like little shorties that are available on the patreon where we can share these really unique cool stories and keep it a little little shorter than our usual uh, episode length time. Yeah, and if you're one of the skippers that skips all of our <laughs> all of our <laughs> jibber jabber at the beginning, you'll love these bonus episodes because we don't do any of that. We don't gab at the beginning. So yeah, we, we get down to business. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just, it's a really nice and short, so especially if you're short on time or something like that, it's really convenient. Yeah, and we, again, we both talk about somebody, I think they're about 40 minutes uh, long total, maybe 30 minutes sometimes if they're a really short person. So in the first um, episode, long form episode that we did that was a bonus episode, um, you talked about Eileen Woods. Yes. And she was the voice of? Cinderella. Cinderella, Cinderella. <laughs> and I talked about Aliyah Muhammad Baker, who was the librarian of Basra. Really cool story. And you're going to hear a sneak peek right now of the episode where I talk about Carolyn B. Shelton, the first acting governor of a United States state. And you talk about Louise Mack. Oh my gosh, she was a spitfire traveling writer and she became one of the first uh, war correspondents from Australia. And started out as kind of a fluff writer. Oh yeah, she columnist. wrote smut. Like what we would call <laughs> smut nowadays, which I am here for. I yeah, love she, she was like page, smut. page six before page <laughs> six existed. So here's a sneak peek at um, what you could look forward to. Because of his status as a pretty well-respected community member, Carrie's upbringing was pretty comfortable until she was about nine years old. Something bad happened? Mm, Yes. Her dad died? Mm. War? On July 24th, 1886, her father was in North Powder, Oregon, waiting on the hotel veranda for the train to arrive to take him back home to Union County. He never arrived. Willis Skiff disappeared disappeared Mm -hmm. and because he was a pretty prominent man people were like holy shit what happened yeah and in fact the pinkerton detective agency was called in and hired to investigate his disappearance large sums of money were fronted to help find him but the mystery was never solved Hmm. it's likely that he was murdered but his body was never found and they never really were able to figure out what really happened and two years later Carrie's mother died. Oh, no. Leaving Carrie and her two siblings, um, the two siblings who were still underage, Nolan and Mabel, all three of them are orphaned. Yikes. That's a raw deal. Yeah. So she's like 11 at this time when she becomes an orphan. Yeah. They were placed with their older brother, Oren, and his wife, Elizabeth. But that situation was not great. I didn't find a lot of details about it, but I know that it did not go well. (laughs) Maybe Oren's wife didn't want to inherit three three kids. (laughs) Yeah. In any case, Oren and Elizabeth either couldn't or wouldn't keep the kids. So one of the men who'd been involved in the investigation of Carrie's father's death, or disappearance, I should say, was a Union County judge named John W. Shelton. And so he took in Carrie and her sister Mabel. So the two girls, but not the boy. Hmm. Carrie is 12 years old at this time. After Or and Elizabeth have decided they don't want them, right? So it cool. seems to me like at first I was like, oh, that's really nice. Like this like judge was like 
felt really bad about these kids who lost their father and he's taking them in. What a nice man. Not really. He's a fucking creep. (laughs) While his wife is away visiting family in California, John Shelton got a quickie divorce, which was later overturned by a judge, and dragged Carrie across the state line to Weiser, Idaho, and married her on October 27th, 1892, just two weeks after her 16th birthday. Oh my gosh, was that his plan the whole time? I don't know, but it has to, I mean, that's gross. It doesn't matter if it was his if it was new, she's 16. Yeah. He's a grown ass man. He was a father figure. She'd known him since she was like nine. So wrong. Gross. So I didn't love that. No. <laughs> the two of them moved to Portland after the wedding. Uh, but the marriage didn't actually last very long because John Shelton died less than two years after their wedding. Oh, good things do happen. I know. I was like, I wonder, I wonder if she learned how to disappear people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he died from. Uh, but Carrie has now lost her father, her mother, her adoptive father slash husband. Gross. And is now completely alone and is still a teenager. That's a lot. Yeah. Have under your belt at 16 years old. Well, she's 18 at this oh, point. Oh, 18. Okay. Yeah, they were but married still. for about two years. Carrie seems to have been uh, really intelligent. And a very resourceful. She actually landed a job as a as a stenographer at the law firm of Star Thomas and Chamberlain. She quickly took on more responsibilities beyond just being a stenographer, which a stenographer's whole job was to basically type out whatever anybody said and mm-hmm. to type up notes and things like that. She started actually drawing up legal papers like deeds and mortgages. Wow. And doing the work of what would normally be entrusted to a young lawyer or a law clerk. Yeah. And those were always jobs performed by... Men. Men. <laughs> and of course, she doesn't even have... I don't even think she had a high school education at this point. Like a full... I don't think she... Because she was 16 when she got married. Yeah. She's 12 when she became an orphan. I mean, I think she probably had private tutors or something at some point because she's very smart. Chamberlain uh, said this of Carrie when speaking with the Morning morning Oregonian in 1909. Say that five times fast. I know. I was like, the Morning Oregonian. The Morning Oregonian. In the law office, she was as useful as a young lawyer would have been in preparing papers and looking after office business. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of that. Yeah, there's a little look at, and, and two, like, I hope you can tell we're a little looser than we usually are in yeah. these little things. So they are really fun. They're really entertaining. They're super entertaining. We have a lot of fun when we, when we record them. Uh, we do definitely, like, let, let down a little. Uh, and so if you're interested in hearing those bonus episodes, you can hit up our link tree, uh, which is in the show notes here, and you can subscribe as a Patreon. And if you do so, you'll get access to that content in addition to some free merch. Not too shabby. Right? And you get to support your favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we hope that you have a great rest of your week and we'll see you again on Friday. All right. Thanks much. Thanks much.